So if you watched Raw on Monday night, and Lord knows why you would choose to do that to yourself, but let's just say, for argument's sake, you had a little bit of morbid curiosity about the first official Raw of 2020 and what this company was going to do, or maybe you were one of those few people that is still drawn into the fact that Brock Lesnar was going to make an appearance on Raw. Perhaps. Not sure what the motivations, habit, nothing else to do, no lives, no sex. So let's watch some wrestlings on Monday night. Maybe I will. But, nonetheless, the big thing, the big development, the big news to come out of Monday's show involved, ironically enough, Brock Lesnar, the Universal Champion. And it came via his advocate, Paul Heyman, right at the beginning of the show, that Brock Lesnar will be at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. So your Universal Champion will actually be bothered to appear at a Big Four pay-per-view. That's comforting to know. And that Brock Lesnar, your Universal Champion, again, let me repeat, Brock Lesnar, your Universal Champion will be entering the Royal Rumble match. Brock Lesnar, your Universal Champion, will be entering the Royal Rumble match. And on top of that, not only will he be entering the match, he will be entering at number one. Number one. Number one. One, Brock Lesnar, your Universal Champion, is going to be in the Royal Rumble as Universal Champion, the belt not on the line, and entering number one. Now, the first thing that stands out about this decision to do this is that this is just basically to me saying we don't have any viable, credible challengers for Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble, nor do we have the time to be able to build one up nor were we bothered over the past year or two to build up anybody new to potentially face him. As a result, we don't have anything else for him. He's our universal champion. He's the champion of your Raw brand. He hardly appears. Well, hell, you're paying him a decent amount of money. You might as well have him booked on one of your big four shows. That's pretty much initially what this feels like. Creative's got nothing else for him, so let's try to do something different. Something historic, because we know the WWE has this morbid fascination with everything they do having to be historic or first ever or unprecedented is the other word. And they're going to tell you that Brock Lesnar entering the Royal Rumble as the Universal Champion is unprecedented. Even though you've had a world champion enter the Royal Rumble before, see Hulk Hogan 1990 as an example. Nonetheless, Let's pretend that history doesn't exist. That was 30 dang years ago. Blah, blah, blah. But Brock Lesnar, your universal champion, not only is entering, he's entering at number one. My initial thought is he wants to hurry up and get the hell out of town or hell out of the arena as soon as possible. Because does anybody for the life of them think that legitimately Brock Lesnar is going to work an hour in the Royal Rumble? No. You either assume one of a couple of different things is that one, he'll be out of the ring early, he'll be taken out early, but still lingering around and largely inactive for large segments of that hour-long or so match. Number two is that you will look at Brock Lesnar in the Royal Rumble, and because he'll be entering number one, he'll be eliminating a lot of people really quickly, and the match is going to go by incredibly quick. Instead of it lasting an hour or a little bit more, you might be looking at a 35 or 40 minute Royal Rumble. And I have to confess, that is perhaps the most appealing option to come out of all of this, is if you save some dang time for a lot of people that don't matter by just serving them up to Lester anyways and having them eliminate them, it would save some time on the show. And we know when it comes to wrestling, too many of these companies like to waste way too much of our time on matches and shows. If it doesn't need to go an hour, then don't go an hour. But that will feel like quite an earth-shattering difference for a lot of people. Or you're looking at him coming in at number one and potentially getting eliminated by the person that's number two or getting eliminated relatively early in the draw. So I'm sorry, I don't buy him as a guy that's going to go the distance in the Royal Rumble. Why the hell would he want to? Why the hell should he? 
Now, we look at this from a kayfabe perspective. If you're saying Brock Lesnar wants to go into the Royal Rumble, why would he want to do that? If you say Brock Lesnar wants to do that because he proves he's so dominant that he has the arrogance and he believes he could beat anybody, perhaps that could potentially work. But I don't really know if that works in this particular case because of the fact you already have no real, true, credible, established contenders the way it sits right now. So people already believe that. People already know that. So do they really need a reminder of that necessarily? It just seemed kind of illogical. You haven't worked in a couple of months. You haven't wrestled in a couple of months. So you want to not only enter yourself into the Royal Rumble match, but you want to go ahead and take all the guesswork out of it by putting yourself in at number one. Like, it's, it's, it's weird. I, I don't know if it's interesting. It is different. And usually I applaud different unless it's really, really dumb different. And I don't know if this is really, really dumb different. It's just different. So I'm really not sure fully if I just totally hate this or I'm actually kind of behind it. I don't really know. Now, if you were ultimately just doing all of this to set up a rematch between Brock Lesnar and Cain Velasquez at WrestleMania for that Universal title, then what the hell is the whole point of all of this? Right? Right? Now, some of you might sit there and say, well, maybe this would prevent Roman Reigns from winning the Royal Rumble. Will it, though? Will it really? Will it? He still have Brock enter number one and not win the Royal Rumble. It won't matter because he's the champion anyways. I actually find the more interesting argument would be is, fuck it, might as well have him plow all the way through every damn buddy as a universal champion, win the whole freaking thing from number one, even if he sits out on the sidelines of the ring for the majority of the match, and then maybe he challenges the Fiend at WrestleMania in a champion versus champion match. The hell, why not? I mean, seriously, why not? What would be so wrong with that at this point? You don't even have to have a unification match. Just have champion versus champion. You know? Shit, stranger things have happened. Stranger things have worked. It's just when I look at this, I, like I said, I'm not sold that this is great. I'm not sold that this is terrible. It just, if anything else, again, serves as a reminder of just how poor of a job WWE has done building up relevant competitors for Brock Lesnar. And the real damage with that is this, is not only do you not have individuals that can quali in a qualified way carry the banner when Brock Lesnar is gone, when he's taking time off, when he's not booked to appear, you're talking about a situation that when Brock Lesnar is actually there, there's nobody that you really are dying to see him fight. There's nobody that you look at and you say he can actually legitimately, believably beat Brock Lesnar. I don't really know or see how he's going to have an entertaining feud, an entertaining program, a really compelling, interesting match with Brock Lesnar, which ultimately doesn't help the main roster talent that's there on a full-time basis. And as a result, it also continues to diminish any left remaining drawing power of a Brock Lesnar. Because it's one of these things where he is so dominant compared to everybody else, but it doesn't necessarily really translate into drawing power. It just doesn't. And in the world of wrestling, eventually... You want guys that are viewed as established, viable competitors and contenders and threats because as much as anything else, you're only as good as a dance partner that you have. Well, if all the dance partners for Brock Lesnar in the ring and his feuds are one, two, three, four steps below him, then that crap just doesn't work the same. It doesn't work. So this is a byproduct of the WWE failing to create stars failing to create real contenders for Brock, and ultimately opting to and choosing to not make those individuals. This is where it shows up. Because you could be talking about Brock Lesnar's end of the Royal Rumble. We have no idea what they're going to do with them come WrestleMania. The belt's apparently not on line, which again, if you really want to get nuts, let's get nuts. Put the damn title on the line. You believe in it so much? Screw the title shot for somebody at WrestleMania. Put the title shot right here, right now. That's what's so weird about him going in and going in number one. I didn't hear anything about the title being on the line. If you really want to prove how dominant somebody is, put the title on the line. He's not afraid to defend it. You get what I'm saying? 
So this to me is just a way for WWE to try and cover up for their mistakes, cover up for their shortcomings in creating new challengers and new contenders and new stars to face Brock Lesnar. And they're trying to put Band-Aids over a cannonball blast. That's exactly what they're doing. Band-Aids over bullet holes, if you will. And I don't know how this is going to work. I have a slight morbid interest in it. But it is not something that is incredibly overwhelmingly you know, grabbing my attention right now, especially because I just have that lingering thought that this is just going to all be one gigantic hype up for a waste of time that just sets up to Brock versus Kane Velasquez at WrestleMania anyways.